Hello and welcome back. My name is Sean, also known as Chili Chump. Today I'm going to show you my quick recipe for habanero ketchup. This one is delicious. The main ingredient in this recipe is of course tomatoes. So I've been growing quite a few this year and uh, let's go and pick a bunch. I find supermarket tomatoes aren't as tasty as the ones that you can grow yourself. So if you have the space, try and grow some tomatoes because you'll really taste the difference. All I need to do with these is actually just take the stalks off and give them a quick rinse. Just make sure there's no dust and dirt and things like that on there. And uh, then they're ready for us to blend. The next ingredient are habaneros. Now, of course, I have been growing habaneros as part of the Chili Chum seed kit. So if you have got that seed kit, then hopefully you have a nice harvest of them as well. My harvest has not been massive this year. However, you don't need a lot of habaneros for this recipe. If you want to spice it up a lot more, then of course you can add a lot more. But I like to have a bit of a balance with that spiciness and obviously the sweetness of the tomatoes and the the flavors of the rest of the ingredients and also my wife would kill me if i made this too hot because she loves this sauce some of the other ingredients besides the tomatoes and habanero we have some cumin seeds some turmeric some himalayan rock salt any salt will do though garlic and ginger and over here we have some erythritol now you can use plain sugar it's up to you i prefer not to use too much sugar in my cooking but plain sugar can be substituted directly for this erythritol we have some ground up pepper and the last ingredient this is very important make sure that you use a vinegar that you like this is a white wine vinegar don't go use something that is very sharp like maybe a distilled white vinegar white wine vinegar works well uh, apple cider vinegar if you like that then use that and uh, just make sure it's around about five percent the first step here is to fry up some of your spices so get your pot onto a very high heat you can use the same pot that you're going to use later to cook this down with. A tablespoon of cumin seeds and just keep those moving in the pot. About half a tablespoon to a tablespoon of ground up pepper. And you want to keep that moving until you start hearing it crackle and pop. And once it's at that stage, that's pretty much ready. And you can turn your pot off and take it off the heat because you really do not want this to burn. And you'll get those amazing smells that come through here. Add that to your blender. I'm gonna be using my Ninja Juicer blender. But you wanna be able to grind this down really fine when you add the tomatoes and your peppers and other ingredients. And it smells incredible. You're going to want around about 750 to 800 grams of tomatoes and uh, I only do that because when I make this I use this jug most of the time and this can only handle up to 900 so if we put in all the rest of our ingredients it's the perfect amount. So next up we're going to take a bit bigger than a thumb size of ginger and we're going to add that in. We're going to add in our garlic and here I'm using quite a lot of garlic again this is down to preference if you only want a little bit of garlic we don't want any garlic at all that's up to you but in my household we absolutely love garlic salt we want a tablespoon of salt any salt will do I just like to use my Himalayan rock salt and you're going to taste this a bit later once you do cook it down and you'll see if you need a little bit more salt or not again down to preference turmeric you're going to want a tablespoon of turmeric that there it does give a lovely flavor but it also gives a beautiful color to this and then the sugar so ketchup is quite a sweet sauce anyway and uh, that means you do need quite a bit of sugar so i'm going to be using four tablespoons of sugar or erythritol in my case and the last ingredient of course are my habaneros and habaneros of course are spicy so if you can't handle the heat then use even fewer than i'm using here uh, just take the stems off the stalks and uh, any of that sort of debris and there we go i think we're 
pretty much done there. The vinegar we'll add later, but let's blend this up. Straight away you see that color change, um, obviously a bit orange, but that's the turmeric that really gives it that richness. If we open this up, we can see that it has a pretty decent consistency, which is kind of what you want. However, we are going to be adding vinegar, which means this is not going to be that lovely thick texture. If you've watched my previous ketchup video where I made some spicy ketchup, you'll know that I use a slow cooker and cook this low and slow for a long period of time. Now this is a quick ketchup, so we don't have time for that. We're going to be using some xanthan gum. Now, the amount of vinegar we need for this, 200 to 250 milliliters. So for this, you want about a quarter of the amount of your ingredients here, and this is 800 grams. So 200 milliliters of this is exactly what we need. So I'm gonna empty out 200 milliliters of this, bring it down to 600, and then we're gonna to top it up with the vinegar, and then I'm going to blend it with a little bit of xanthan gum to bring it together. I might add a little bit more than 200 actually. I like it a little bit more vinegary. But yeah, again, up to your preference there. But 200 milliliters for 800 or a quarter the amount of vinegar as you have for your other ingredients, that's a good starting point. The amount of xanthan gum we use, this stuff is very strong. You do not need a lot. This is a teaspoon. I'm not using a whole teaspoon. I'm gonna be using about about a quarter of a teaspoon. That's about right. So if you have a look there, hopefully you can see that's pretty decent consistency. And that is just going to go into the pot. Now, of course, I've got to give it a bit of a taste. Spot on. The heat is just right. Wow, that tastes good. <laughs> All that's left now to do is to get this to a simmer, so don't heat it up too hot. You want to get it so it's just simmering and then you want to keep it at that simmer for about five minutes. I wish you could smell this, it is smelling amazing. The cooking here is not to simmer down or get rid of any of the moisture. It's purely to make this a safe sauce. So because of the amount of vinegar we've added and obviously the natural acidity of tomatoes, this is a sauce that will last quite a long time. If you bottle it up and make sure that you keep your bottles nice and clean before you bottle up, put it in the fridge, you can have this <laughs> perfectly safe for at least a couple of months. There we have our amazing ketchup. I've made this so many times, so I know what ingredients work for me, the amounts, but if you're making this for yourself for the first time, follow my guidance, but taste it as you go. You might want a little bit less salt or a little bit more salt, a little bit more sugar if you're used to a sweeter ketchup like a Heinz, of course, but this is just a great balance for myself and for my wife. Time to give it a taste. I'm interested to see how these habaneros have done in this because it didn't look like I added a lot, but we'll see what sort of heat we have. So again, the consistency, it's what I like. Uh, it will thicken up a little bit as it cools down because it is still quite warm. If you are used to a more gelatinous kind of sauce, like a, again, a Heinz ketchup, 
then maybe go with half a teaspoon of the xanthan gum and you'll get it a lot thicker than this. Mm. Flavors are good. It's quite a kick to it. Um, oh, tastes great. Tastes really good. Perfect amount of heat. Honestly, you don't want to go crazy with this. It's not that type of sauce. Uh, this is something that can be used on pretty much anything. <laughs> when I call it a ketchup, that's how I use it mainly. If I'm going to have chips or fries, then this definitely goes on that. It's so good. There you have it, my quick, easy, delicious habanero ketchup. Now, you can use other peppers with this, but I find that it does change the flavor profile a little bit. What I've added in here absolutely complements each other and the flavors, nothing really dominates and uh, you get the lovely flavors come through. You get a bit of a taste of the habanero and then there's a bit of a taste of the garlic and a bit of the ginger. You get to taste all of those things coming through. If you use something stronger, like maybe even a seven pot primo or something like that, yes, you'll get the heat, but you'll also get an overwhelming flavor that might dominate some of the other more subtle flavors that are in here. Give this one itself a try if you have got those habaneros from your chili chum seed kit or if you're growing habaneros anyway. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, stay spicy.